Good morning, church family. Welcome to our online service, and thank you for joining us this morning. We celebrate today as the third Sunday after Pentecost, and traditionally, the second Sunday in June, we commemorate Nettie Baker Day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us begin our service with an opening hymn, How Great Thou Art, hymn number 77. Today's opening prayer in honor of Nettie Baker will be read by Andrew Campbell. Andrew? Please join me in our prayer of gratitude. Almighty God, as we celebrate Nettie Baker Day, we give you thanks for our church, a place rich in history and tradition. We remember that you raise up servants like Nettie Baker to exemplify your promise of redemption through righteousness and self-sacrifice. Help us to forever remember her legacy. Let the lamp that shines over our altar inspire us with a new vision, a new love, a new wisdom, and a fresh understanding of your kingdom on earth, so that we may more fully serve you. Help us to open our hearts, minds, and spirits, and to find ways we can better follow your Son, Jesus Christ, who lights our way and longs for us to make our world a better place. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. Now, let us have a moment of silent meditation and a prayer. Hear the words of assurance. God welcomes the renewal of our faith. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. With heartfelt gratitude, let us lift up the Lord's Prayer together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's anthem, In the Cross of Christ, will be delivered by Deborah Shield and Heather Edwards Wilson. Deborah and Heather. Thank you, Deborah and Heather. Thank you. Now, let's share our joys and lift up our concerns and prayers. Our virtual New York Annual Conference is almost over. All business parts are done, and we have an ordination service this afternoon. Here are some concerns and prayer requests. Bill Wall had a medical procedure done for his heart last Friday. We continue to pray for his full recovery. Please continue to pray for all these friends for their speedy recovery. Tom Siobhan, Bruce Smith, Helen Mulvihill, Carolyn Ferry, Joan Schmidt, Rosemary Heiserer, Dorothy Lindsay, Sun Bose and her brother Chung, and Ileana Surf and her family. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this glorious Sabbath day, in joyous expectation, we celebrate today as Nettie Baker Day. We not only dedicated the fresh flowers in memory of her, but we also dedicated our hearts in memory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through this rich legacy of our church, help us to practice and renew our discipleship each and every day. At this time, we lift up prayers for our families and friends 
who are suffering and are seeking your wisdom, guidance, and a healing touch. Lord, please stretch out your arms and embrace their tired body and wounded heart. Help us, O oh God, to be the agents who faithfully work on your behalf. Bless all those unsung heroes and angels who dedicate their lives in order to save others. O oh Lord, we pray for the leaders of our churches, our nation, and our world. Let them surrender their own wills, egos, and prides to you, and be humble to listen to the cries of people wholeheartedly. We all needed to change. God of the prophets, you call us to speak truth with love to a reluctant world. Give us courage, passion, wisdom, strength, and faith in you. With hope and visions, we implore to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today's children's message will be delivered by Alyssa Schonerman from Germany. Alyssa? Good morning, children. It's Miss Alyssa here today. Uh, sending you a message all the way from Germany again. I hope everyone is doing well. Today I'm going to give you a children's message um, for Nitty Baker Sunday. Now, if you're watching the service with your family, uh, you probably heard about Nitty Baker's story and why she is so important to our church family. And you know that Nitty Baker and her story are very special only to our church family, only to the United Methodist Church of Lake Rod Concoma. So I think that's kind of cool and that's kind of special just for us. That's what we get to have, just for us. Uh, I wanted to share with you um, a short Bible verse that you're actually going to hear um, probably sometime in today's service. So I'm going to share that with you now. I'm going to read it out. It is from Luke 21, verses 1 to 4. He looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts in the treasury. So imagine like a treasure box. And he saw a poor widow, so a woman whose husband passed away, put in two copper coins. So imagine like a dime or a penny. And he said, truly I tell you, this widow has put more than all of them for all they had contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all the living that she had. So all of the rich people, well, they put a couple of things, right? And they either kept it for themselves or barely gave anybody anything. And this woman, who was very poor, decided, well, I'm poor already. I'm going to give whatever I have to those who need it. So, for example, the church. And this is very similar to Nettie Baker's story. Now, Nettie Baker gave all that she had because she loved her church family so much. And I've gotten to know many of you, so many of you over the years, um, and I know how much you would do also for the church family. So as we celebrate Nettie Baker Sunday, I also, and also as we celebrate the last day of Sunday school, it always seems to happen, right? Nettie Baker Sunday is always on the last um, Sunday of Sunday school as well. I want you to, to think about all that Nettie Baker did and all that she gave um, for our church. And I want you to think about what you do. What do you do to help your church? Do you sing in the choir? Uh, do you volunteer at events, uh, either on Sundays or other days of the week? Uh, do you work your spiritual brain up here? every day uh, or every week by going to church events or going to Sunday school or confirmation class, uh, whether online or in person right now, as you know, um, that is also giving to our church family. Now, I want you to take this summer and do a little reflection, right? Reflect in your mind. What have I done for my church family? What can I do next month, next year, years from now? As Christians, we will never stop spreading the word of God. And as long as you have God in your heart, 
um, in Jesus' teachings, right, in your soul to guide you, you will never stop finding ways to be a part of our church family, just as Mary Baker, right? We still remember her to this day, years, decades, decades ago that she passed away, but we still remember her because she was such a valuable member and she gave as much as she could, right, to our church family. Now, I would like to close today with a prayer. So, please put your hands together and pray with me. Dear God, thank you for giving us Nitty Baker. She was so special to our church family and gave everything she had because she knew the value of service, fellowship, and tithing. Please let us give all that we can to our church family because we know how important this family is to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. The Nettie Baker story will be read by Jennifer Campbell. Jennifer? Many years ago, Miss Nettie Baker lived on Hawkins Avenue near the railroad station where she kept house for her widowed brother and his daughter. She loved our little brown church at Five Corners and participated in all its activities. She was a frail woman, but she managed to walk to church each Sunday unless a church member drove her. As time passed, her brother died and her niece moved away, and Miss Baker was left alone. But her support for our church by her presence and prayers never wavered. When Nettie passed away in May of 1955, she left her entire estate to our church, which amounted to under $25. It was truly a widow's might. Our pastor, the Reverend Harold Sabin, used the money to buy materials to fashion the brass lamp which today shines on our Bible and altar. Reverend Sabin made the brass lamp with his own hands, fashioning it in a little building behind Newton's garage. In this way, Nettie Baker's final gift to our church has become a memorial of beauty, which you will not see in any other church. Because there was no family left to remember Miss Baker, the Sunday school children filled a wooden cross also made by the Reverend Sabin with their flowers. This cross was made from the altar rail, which graced our little brown church before it was moved to its present location. Each year on the second Sunday in June, a plain wooden cross with many holes is filled with flowers by our church members and their children. After the service, the floral cross is taken to the cemetery and placed on Miss Baker's grave. Just as she remembered her church, so we remember her in this way. In Luke 21, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw a poor widow put in two copper coins. Jesus said, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all the living she had. What a beautiful tribute to a woman who would otherwise have been forgotten, but who gave all she had to the glory of God and the church she loved. Thank you, Jennifer. This is the hand-decorated cross which will be placed on Nettie Baker's grave immediately following today's service. And now, please join with me in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Most loving God, without you, no words or works of ours have meaning. We present this handcrafted cross adorned with beautiful flowers as a perpetual remembrance of Miss Baker, who lived in total commitment to you and your church. May it be an enduring witness of the Le Grand Kankama United Methodist Church to all your people, and may our lives be consecrated to your service, remembering to give our all as Christ gave his all for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Today's scripture lessons will be read by Sue and Richard Campbell. Let's begin with Sue. Sue? Good morning. The first scripture lesson today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 11 through 15. You will be enriched in every way for great generosity, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the rendering of this service not only supplies the wants of the saints, but also overflows in many thanksgivings to God. 
under the test of this service, you will glorify God by your obedience in acknowledging the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Our next reading is Luke, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. He looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw a poor widow put in two copper coins. And he said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For all they contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all the living that she had. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join us our next hymn, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, United Methodist Hymnal, number 277. a special guest speaker this morning, one of our lay servants, George Dukas. The title of his homily is Remembering Nettie Baker. George? Good morning, and welcome again to Nettie Baker Sunday. When I used to watch late night TV, it was well, a favorite part of the show for me when they would walk outside into the street, into Times Square, and would ask very simple questions to the crowd, and some of the answers were very amusing. Now, I'm not going to do that with you, but I am going to try something like that with you. I'm going to list someone's name, and I just want, by a show of hands, for you to let me know if you know who that person is. Okay, let's start with politics. The name George Washington. Okay, I see a lot of hands for George Washington. He was our first president, soldier. Everyone here in the United States and probably throughout the world know who George Washington was. Sports. Babe Ruth. All right, I see a lot of show of hands for Babe Ruth. He was probably the most famous baseball player that ever lived, even if he was a Yankee. Entertainment, John Wayne. John Wayne was an actor, and he started in the 1930s, 40s, and went on for decades after that. Music, the Beatles. The Beatles changed music history in the 60s. We had the English invasion. All right, if you go to the Bible, if I say Noah, do you know who Noah was? Yep, all the hands are coming up. 
God told him to build an ark, a huge boat, and take two of every kind of animal. And last but not least, Jesus. Jesus probably traveled less in his lifetime than the normal person here in the United States, but he is known throughout the world. He gave his life so that we could have life everlasting. Nettie Baker. Okay, you've heard the story of Nettie Baker today, so I think you all know who Nettie Baker is. Reverend, Reverend Harold Sabin. Now, not that many people would know that name, and I've been coming to this church for about 47 years, and I remember Nettie Baker, but Harold Sabin, who was just as important to this story, uh, is not at the tip of my tongue. So how many people outside of this church do you think remember hearing about Nettie Baker or Reverend Harold Sabin? I'd say practically none. So what was so special about Nettie Baker? So let's go back in history. 1955, I moved from Davidson Avenue in the Bronx to 205th Street in Hollis, Queens. And in May of 1955, Nettie Baker died. I was four years old. We're not sure how old Nettie Baker was when she died, but when she passed away, we still talk about her every year. We honor her every year. Why do we do that? What was so special about these two people? Well, we honor her memory by our thoughts, prayers, and flowers for the last 56 years. So let's see what we know about Nettie Baker that made her so special. We're told she lived in Ronkonkoma, kept house for her brother and her niece, and a lot of people did that then, it wasn't that special. And when her brother passed on, her niece moved away, she was all alone. But she loved our little church here in the Five Corners and was an active member. She lived near where the Long Island Railroad is located, which is very close to my house. And she walked to church every Sunday unless she could get a ride. Would you walk that far to church? I mean, there was no cars, there was no Ubers, there was no cabs to take. She had no choice but to walk. So when she was alive, she gave everything to our church with her support in all the activities, her prayers, and her donations. Now, she was not a wealthy woman. When she died, I believe she donated more than anyone has ever donated to the church. She left her entire estate valued at $25. Now, back in 1955, that was worth $243.89. So here was a woman that honored this church by her love of God, through study. I believe she had a Bible in her house, like most of us had back then, and not many people had TVs or computers, so it was the Bible or some books. But if she wanted to go to a library, she would have had to walk, if there were libraries that close to her. We honor her because she gave everything to the church in her life and in her death. Now, that alone would make her really special, 
But the story doesn't end here. You see, the pastor of the church at that time was Reverend Harold Sabin. Now, the pastor was very handy making things with his hands. So he took that $25 and bought some brass and behind Newton's garage, which used to be on Portion Road, but is not even there anymore, he made a lamp that now hangs in our altar above the cross. Nettie Baker had no family left to remember her for all her good deeds. So the Sunday school children filled a wooden cross, there was holes in it, also made by Reverend Sabin from the altar rail of the church, and filled it with flowers that is placed on her grave the second Sunday of June. Because of these two people, we are reminded what Jesus taught us when he looked up and saw the rich filling the church treasury and a poor widow putting in only two copper toin, coins. Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all the living that she had. One of the scripture readings from today was from 2 Corinthians 11 to 15. You will be enriched in every way for great generosity, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. The best way to thank Jesus is to try and live the way he taught us. And when he was asked what the greatest commandment was, he said, you should love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Do we follow Jesus' sample to us as to how we should live? Do we thank God for our life every day? I try to, but fail more often than I wish to say. I am thankful just to be alive every day. I've gone through a lot in my life and I've been blessed by God. I have a wonderful family, my parents, my relatives, my wife. We are happily married, coming on 49 years in December. I've got three lovely children, six grandchildren, good friends. But I've survived a quad bypass, a stent, a need for a pacemaker and a defibrillator, and a stroke that left me with no lasting effects. Again, I'm happy every day just to be alive. We have the opportunity to do the same. Give to our prayers, study, and actions to the church to honor God and Jesus, who gave up his life so that we may have everlasting life. We honor Jesus by trying to live as he taught us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, We Walk by Faith, number 2196.
Let us pray. People of God, go forth in the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Proclaim the gospel throughout the earth. Serve God with gladness in deeds of justice and mercy. Go in peace. Amen. Now, I'd like to make a few announcements. I would like to thank those who, in 2021, continue to send in their weekly contributions. If you have not donated in the past, please consider donating to the United Methodist Church of Lake Rancancoma. During this difficult time, your financial help will be very much appreciated. There is an urgent need for healthy blood donors. To make an appointment, go to www.nybc.org or call 800-933-2566. Thank you. Our church is happy to announce our Loaves and Fishes Soup Kitchen is now open every Tuesday at 5 p.m. To better serve the community, our emergency food pantry will be open this Tuesday, June 15th, between the hours of 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Our food pantry needs the following items chicken and beef broth, cans of chicken, boxed milk, laundry detergent, paper towels, toilet paper, and tissues. Our thrifty shop, Martha's Place, is now open Monday and Tuesday, Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Come and see our selection of summer apparel, housewares, jewelry, and keepsakes at bargain prices. I'd like to express my deep gratitude to Campbell family, George Dukas, Deborah Shield, and Heather Edwards Wilson for participating in today's service. My beloved congregation, summer is approaching very fast. Children will be out of school soon. Enjoy this beautiful spring weather. Until we meet again, please take good care of yourselves and be well. Shalom to you and goodbye. <laughs>